and it messed with me mentally a lot. Like I, I couldn't trust my body. I felt like every time I was having success in the back of my mind, I was like, okay, things are going too well. Like something is about to happen. Like What's something coming? is about to pop. Something is about to happen. It was difficult. It was a difficult journey, but believing in myself and just not getting down on myself was probably one of the biggest things too for me. It got me a nine year career, which is amazing. And now that I look back on it, I'm so blessed for that, but it wasn't all gravy. Like there was a lot of ups and downs with that. Yo, 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 this is the Streetwise Podcast. We're here to help you level up your game, level up your leadership and level up your life. I'm your host, Matthew McReynolds. I'm a multi-brand franchisee and I'm a franchise consultant where I help people find, launch, and build their ideal business. My main goal is to help you get off a zero and become the person that your dreams need you to be. Buckle up, get your popcorn ready. Let's go. All right, on today's episode, we're talking to Alex Okafor. Alex played in the NFL for multiple teams for nine years. Super impressive. He went to the University of Texas in Austin, but... More importantly, he graduated from Pflugerville High School, Streetwise Nation. We got Alex Okafor taking the stage. Get your popcorn ready. Buckle up. Grab your notebook. Don't forget your pen. Let's go. I'm figuring this thing out as uh, as I go. But again, man, it, it means a lot for you to for you to hop on. So since we're just hopping in, man, we got Alex Okafor here with us today. Alex, man, what? What fills up your day right now? Like, we'll get into the history. We'll get into some of your successes and failures. But what I really want to know is what fills up your day-to-day right now? What are you up to? Yeah, so, okay, so just taking it back a little bit, I played professional football in the NFL for nine seasons, uh, retired back in 2022. So I guess I'm going on uh, two years of not playing ball. So as of right now, kind of, <laughs> kind of like we were talking about before we started the uh, the podcast episode. But I moved back to my hometown, Pflugerville, Texas, our hometown, and um, I'm actually doing a lot of stuff within the school right now. So I'm doing like a mentorship program. Uh, I actually plan on running for the school board in May. So I'm just getting back to the community and uh, just diving back into the school system. Dude, I love that. And I knew that you were plugged into the community. That was on my list of things to to ask you about. Uh, so getting back to Pflugerville, man, what has that been like mm-hmm. for you, you know, growing up in the community? You've gone, I know when you're in the league, you played for multiple teams, but that, that's an intentional move to go back in, in sociology. You know, that's the term like organic intellectual, somebody that, that leaves mm-hmm gets a bunch of knowledge and resources and experiences success, but then actually comes back to the community that they grew up in to give back. You don't see it very often, bro. Like what has that experience been like for you? Um, I mean, fairly, fairly new coming back into it. What's it been like? Yeah, no, it's been really cool if I'm being real with you. Um, Like you said, it doesn't happen that often. Usually people go to the league make their money and then you know they sell off into the sunset people probably never ever see them again and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that man live your life do whatever you need to do but for me my heart's back in my community i've always done a lot of work within the community so i just feel like you know growing up in pflugerville i feel like our age demographic we like we probably had the most impact at the school during our years whether that was 07 08 or 09 but we didn't really have too many people to look up to when we was in school. So now kind of while I'm phasing out of the league and out of professional sports, I'm like, why not us? Why not me? So I'm coming back kind of giving these kids somebody to look up to, somebody that they can see physically, somebody that they can bounce ideas off of and just chop it up with. And I'm, I've been having fun doing that. Dude, I love that. So when I graduated from Wheaton College and my football career ended at the time you know when I was studying it was criminal justice with the with the strong emphasis in urban education getting back into those inner city communities not quite you know Pflugerville I was on the west side of Chicago and then moved Mm -hmm. to West Dallas and there was such a need and a gap for people like us we weren't if there was there was no one like us in those schools there wasn't the older brother the mentor somebody that you can really resonate with and it's super powerful, man. Have you been able to really connect with anybody on an individual level yet? Or is it more of 
seeing the long-term impact as you are, you essentially are just stacking bricks. Right. It's a little bit of both in my case. So I'm doing a little bit of mentorship right now and I have two specific students that I'm mentoring right now. And I've been able to see a direct impact on those two students. And that has been awesome. Like it's been, it's been cool seeing them respond to the stuff that I've been feeding them. It's been cool to see them listening. It's been cool to even see them push back on me a little bit. You know, I got to learn yeah. this stuff too. Um, yeah. But that's been really cool. But kind of like you said, as a whole, I'm seeing an impact too. Um, just speaking to, to large groups, whether that's middle schoolers, whether that's high schoolers. But uh, to, to answer your question, a little bit of both. So. Oh, it's good, man. And you've got you've got such a presence. You know, you're a big dude. And you're on the back end of some very significant success. I remember when I was at the schools, uh, I, always, I often got confused for one of the students. <laughs> a parent would come by <laughs> at uh, at one of the events, and I was mm -hmm. always I was always jack of all jack of all trades, man. I was working as I would substitute teach. My my title would be athletic administrator or assistant to the athletic administrator. But man, I'm mm -hmm. subbing classes, I'm cooking food in the cafeteria, and I'm coaching a parent would come up and say, where's, where's the person in charge? I said, man, that's actually, that's me. <laughs> that's me. I'm here. And so I know what I was doing was good, but I, you've got an opportunity to do it at such a high level. And I love it, man. And it's biblical, you know, there's mm -hmm. principles of having the, the Timothy, the Paul, the Barnabas, you should always have somebody feeding into you. And then you should always turn back and feed into somebody else. So dude, all the roses. I appreciate that. What was it that significantly, you kind of already answered it, but was there a thing that told you that this is what you needed to do when you were done mm -hmm. playing? Yeah. Yeah. So um, all of my time throughout the, throughout the NFL, I was always doing some type of giving back to whether that was our elementary school, whether that was our middle school. So just for example, um, I went to Spring Hill Elementary. So while I Me played, too. Let's there you go, go uh, represent. Let's go, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so while I played, I hosted, uh, I donated multiple book fairs at the school. Um, I hosted a reading program there, there as well. Just a bunch of just activity for the kids. And that kind of got my heart hooked on the school system. So I knew kind of, Whenever I retired, I knew I wanted to move back to the Austin area. And if I'm going to be in the Austin area, I'm like, I can't be this close to home and not have an impact, not have a direct impact. So I was like, you know what, if I'm going to move back, if I'm going to move back to the crib, then I need to be in the schools. It doesn't have to take up all my time, but I need to give back a little bit. And while I'm figuring out what's next for me, I will be in the schools doing what I can. Love it. Yeah, you're one of the few guys that I can actually look back to and see like, dang, this dude, like I came up with this dude. Like I was one year ahead of you in school, but mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure your little brother and my little sister played on like the same soccer team at one time mm -hmm. and he done grown up too. How How, how <laughs> is how is the family life right now? Mm -hmm. Like parents, everybody, but then you, you building the family yourself. How How is that going for you? So it's been it's been up and downs, man. Some highest of highs and some lowest of lows. Uh, my mom passed away back in 2020 from um, wow. blood cancer. So wow. that's when I'm talking about like the lowest of lows. Yeah. So that was difficult for uh, for me and the family, especially the time it was poor too. Um, I had just came off the Super Bowl win. Uh, it was February. I was thinking that I was going to have an amazing off season. And then first of all, COVID hit. So that kind of that kind of ruined everything. And right after COVID hit, that's when my mom, my mom got diagnosed with cancer and, and passed away wow. three weeks later. So, um, yeah, it was it was tough for me and the fam. But, you know, we've made peace with the situation. We've leaned on on the Lord and uh, and he's put strength within us. So we've, we've been able to move on. But. Other than that, I got married in twenty in March of twenty twenty two. So that's what I'm talking about, the highest of highs as well. So I'm I've recently started my own family. I got a beautiful wife named Kaylee. Um if the Lord's willing, hopefully we can have our first child this year. So um, you know, I'm I'm looking forward to building a family and getting that going. Man, first of all, my condolences, you know, that's that's tough and I know it's been some time, but um that's that's heavy bro i didn't know that mm -hmm. thank you for sharing that i think you know somebody in the audience is probably going through something 
right now and they're going to hear that and it's going to resonate with them so thank you for sharing that mm -hmm. secondly congratulations on getting married you know being being married being a father is is one of the hardest things but also one of the most rewarding things that i've ever done bar none and you're doing what what the lord definitely has for you and so in 2019 my wife and i lost our daughter uh eden she was my wife was 38 weeks pregnant and everything was healthy and this would have been our this was our second pregnancy we already had our, our oldest roman who's six and 38 weeks pregnant and we had just gone on for an appointment and everything was fine and then a couple of days later no heartbeat and it was over and we never had any answers and i'm just i tell you that i share this on the podcast but just like for you what i've learned is that our pain leads us to our purpose but also our pain points because everybody has the hardest thing that ever happened to them. And it's our pain that helps us to connect with people. And so I think it's really powerful that whatever God has for you, as you move through it with your family as a leader and in the community, man, it's powerful stuff, bro. It's really cool to see you like with the mindset that you have. So keep going, man. That's yeah, big. Not I appreciate that. And just kind of adding to it, I think you hit it right on the head. Just um, everybody kind of, you know, sharing their testimonies of, of the hard times, because I mean, we always hear that, you know, whether it's social media, whether it's TV, whatever, people only allow us to see the positives in their life. And, you know, that's that works, but it doesn't help people grow. What helps people grow is learning from people's hard times learning from people's mm. mistakes, learning from deaths in the family and how people move on and continuously travel through life. So you hit it right on the head. I'm, I've never ran away from my story. I've never ran away from my testimony. And I hope that, you know, it helps somebody else get stronger. Man, amen, bro. Amen. And again, thank you for, thank you for sharing it. Um, I've kind of, I have a habit of going out of order on this thing. I didn't prep you ahead of time. And it honestly, it's starting to become intentional. Like I'll throw something and then see how you respond. And then I'll come back and I'll, I'll hit all my points no matter what. So I'm not worried about it. So I just, I apologize for the lack of, um, flow. Cause to me, it, it all, it all flows. I'm a little neurotic that way, but I know that along with what you're doing in the community, you also have, your podcast and your show that you're producing right now behind the face mask. Can you tell us about what that is, what the purpose of it is and what you're hoping to achieve as you build that out? Yeah. So kind of like I did with the, uh, with the school stuff, I'm taking it back to right when I finished playing. Um, I made enough money in my career to where I'm fortunate that I don't have to jump into anything right away. So I get to kind of take my time with what I do next. I get to, like you said, be intentional with what I'm the way I'm moving and uh, really just do what mm -hmm. makes me happy. So obviously what makes me happy is being in the schools and giving back to kids. Another thing is I'm, I'm trying to find my way through the media space. And this podcast, kind of like what you're doing, is giving me an opportunity for me to get reps as a media personality. So me being a former UT player, I'm like, I got a pool of players just sitting here in our backyard, you know, why not pull some of their names and just start interviewing them and see what they have to talk about. And I've had a lot of fun with it and it's gone well so far. So it is a lot of fun. Have you had any uh, unexpected, um, unexpected interviews, unexpected level ups, things that, you know, you didn't really think might happen, but, you know, kind of maybe caught you by surprise throughout the process. Yeah. So, um, so I guess the, the unexpected thing that happened was it's not necessarily with my podcast, but there's another podcast that I'm a part of. I know it's getting confusing, but my podcast is called Behind the Face Mask, where it's like a one-on-one -on -one format, kind of like this. Yep. I'm involved in another podcast called Third and Longhorn, where it's like a group setting. It's like five of us, and we get to interview, you know, UT figures, whether that's players, whether that's coaches, whatever that is. Okay. And that opportunity came about from my first podcast. So that's something unexpected that happened. Like, you know, one door opens and it leads to something else. So just me kind of experimenting with my podcast gave me an opportunity on another podcast. And I think that one has a chance to be really successful. So it's been fun. And it's been really cool. 
That's beautiful, bro. And that, I'm glad you said that because I didn't know which one came first because I knew mm -hmm. that you were on both of the two, you know, just doing my homework beforehand. Is there one that do you see the trajectory of one going farther than the other? Or are you in it for pure reps? Where's your mindset at when it comes to balancing the two different things, trying not to get diluted? Right. And that's a great question. So the the group format one, the second podcast, the third and longhorn one, I think the trajectory on that one, the ceiling is a lot higher than the one that okay. I have one on one, just because you know how it is. It's like either you're going to love me or hate me as a personality. And the people that love sure. me are going to follow me. The people that don't like me are not going to follow me. But sure. when you have a, a podcast with four or five people on the set, you got multiple personalities. You got a wider reach. So definitely that one has a higher ceiling. But the one, my, my personal one, that's my baby. That's the one that, you know, yeah. that got me off the ground. So yeah. that's more of me getting the reps. That's more of the love of the game in that one. That's more of me, you know, just experimenting. And, you know, that one doesn't really have to take off. It's for me personally, and I'm okay with okay. that. Yeah. Dude, okay. First of all, that that good answer, bro. That's a solid, solid answer. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I respect and appreciate that so much. Mm -hmm. Second off, who doesn't like you, though? Come on, man. You a likable okay, dude. Okay, <laughs> okay fine. On, maybe maybe not liking me isn't the word, but listening to me every single day. Okay, I'm, okay, I'm okay. the weekly. You know, that might rub people the wrong way. So who knows? I feel that. I, uh, yeah. I'm at the point now, I, I've, got, I've got 41 episodes posted, and I've got mm -hmm. probably, like, if I were to edit everything and put it out now, I'd probably have mm -hmm. close to, you know, 50, something like that. And I'll share clips with the people on my team and you know, hey this person was really good but it'll have snippets of me too and i've actually gotten feedback from my team they're like all right bro like i see you all day and you talk to me during the day in the meeting i'm not trying to also listen to you on the way to work so you have to lay off <laughs> sharing with us your podcast like it's getting a little ridiculous now so i, I feel that i feel yeah, that and i mean that's i mean that's part of growing man it's uh at yeah. first at first, I used to hate hearing my voice on camera. <laughs> now, now that I've gotten comfortable with it and I've started sharing it, now other people are starting to get annoyed from hearing my voice. So, you know, it's, it's finding that middle ground, but, you know, it's whatever. Hey, man, there's going to be enough people out there that fall in love with your message that it doesn't matter, man. It doesn't matter. You're going to impact lives, and what you're doing is is really big. Okay, so you're building out the platform. You're on the school board, or you're you're – your goal is to be on the school board, but you're giving back to the community. What was it like when you had to, um, you see I'm working backwards, when you had to transition away from being an NFL football player to being a retired NFL football player? What was that like for your mindset, You know, your mental, but also your spiritual identity in having to make that shift? No, I'm glad you asked this question because this, one, this one's good. Um, so, it was tough. Like just to answer the, the question straight up, it was tough. It was difficult. And it was, it was a little bit surprising for me. Um, somebody that's played nine years, I've gotten a lot of experience in the league. Obviously, like I said, I've made enough money to be able to do what I want to do once I'm done with football. So there wasn't an immediate pressure to start working again. So as soon as I retired, I thought I'd be in the clear. I thought I'd be one of those guys that, you know, enjoyed retirement. Um, had a smile on my face, was golfing every single day. But <laughs> <laughs> but that's not the case. Whenever, you know, whenever you sit at home and, and start twiddling your thumbs, you you know, you you're in a routine. Um as an athlete, you're you're on a structured routine every single day. So I needed yep. to get back into some sort of routine, but I didn't know what that routine was gonna be. Whenever you play sports all your life, like I'm an expert on the football field, but as soon as I transition into real life, I'm a rookie all over again. I have zero experience. Like, I think I had one job in high school and I was at JC Penney's. <laughs> so, like, like, unless you need me to fold clothes, I don't have any experience out there. Man. So, so that was, a, that was a little difficult. And it's, it's difficult trying to find work that feeds your soul, knowing that you don't have experience. Like, you can't just jump into anything. You can't jump into what you think you deserve because I haven't proven that I deserve that. So it was a lot of soul searching. It was, you know, a lot of being still. First time that I've been in one place for a whole year, year round. Wow. So that was tough. Like it was, I was fighting it for a while. 
and it took me about a year, a year and a half, but finally I feel like I'm in my groove and got my got my footing down. So I'm I'm in a good place now, but it wasn't always like that. Yo, 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 thanks for listening this far. It's at this point in the episode that I want to talk about Streetwise franchising, teaching, training, building, Streetwise franchise. As a franchise consultant, it's my job, it's my absolute pleasure, and it's my mission to help aspiring entrepreneurs find, launch, and build their ideal business. I've been a franchise owner for almost a decade. I know what it means to struggle. I know what it means to build a team. If you're ready to get off a of zero, if you're ready to build something for yourself, visit streetwisefranchising.com. Let's get the conversation started. Don't wait until tomorrow to build your future. It starts today. Streetwise Franchising. Stay humble, stay hungry, stay streetwise. Let's get back to the episode. Sure. So was it just getting out there, stacking bricks, you know, putting one foot in front of the other, and then eventually you started to recreate an identity for yourself? Did it happen? I mean, I'm sure it didn't happen overnight. That's kind of cliche, but was there anything specific that that you did or plugged into that helped? Yeah. So it's like you said, kind of getting back out there, um, putting yourself out there um, okay. is okay. more of the word like, you know, just start showing your face again. So whether it's at the schools, like I had to kind of humble myself in a weird way and just walk back through my old high school doors and be like, hey, my name's Alex Ogapur, you know, just kind of reintroducing myself. I don't have much going on right now, but if y'all would take me, I'm willing to go mentor some kids and talk to these kids. So that kind of got me started then. Or if it's with the podcast, it's like, okay, create a huge YouTube channel, um, reach out to one of the players and be like, hey, this is Alex Ogapur. I played at UT from so-and-so. This is the first episode of my podcast. It would mean a lot if you just jump on this first episode. <laughs> so just yeah. kind of like kind of putting yourself out in that forefront. It's kind of how you get to start uh, stacking those bricks. But I mean, it's difficult putting yourself out there, especially when you you left everything in the past, like your old identities in the past, all your experiences in the past, like moving forward and everything is brand spanking new. That's difficult. But just taking one step at a time, like you said, has been has been the key for me. No, it's beautiful, man. That's that's the whole point behind this show is progress over perfection and hungrily and eagerly seeking opportunities to fail forward. And I intentionally yeah, yeah. made my first episode of this show. I didn't have a mic. I didn't know how to use Riverside. I didn't know how to cut it up. I forgot to press the echo cancellation on the little thing right there, the little <laughs> dashboard. And so every time I talk, there's an annoying echo. And I didn't know how to use the script to go back and add the studio sound in to fix it up. I just didn't know. And the first episode was straight trash. It was great content, <laughs> but it was terrible. But it's like I waited five years to make that first episode. Mm -hmm. But now that was in May. So we're less than a year later and I'm almost to 50 and it was just taking that first step. How have you applied progress over perfection and being ready to fail forward? How have you applied that to your journey? Not just pivoting. I mean, we're talking about your pivot from the NFL, but again, because I'm working backwards, how did you do that even while you were playing? Those, I guess yeah. those could be two different, two different thought processes. Yeah. So I guess I'll start at while I was playing. And so while I was playing, we're going to have to take it back all the way to college. So Come on. with college. Yeah. Um, so obviously I came in as a defensive end my freshman year, played defensive end my freshman year. Then my sophomore year, coaches came to me and was like, hey, um, the way the game is moving, it's a pass happy league. Like we think that you might be better suited at defensive tackle. And anybody that knows football, I was maybe – 260 at the time, 255 at the time, like I was undersized for a D tackle. But so selfishly, I wanted to stay at the on the edge. That's what I played my whole life. That's what my body type was for. But in college, you know what? I'm like, okay, I'm gonna believe in the coaches. I'm gonna trust the coaches. And I'm gonna experiment. Like I'm gonna go out there and see what I can do on the inside and see if I can be productive. Now kind of speeding through the story, 
they moved me back outside the next year because I wasn't good inside. But <laughs> I, <laughs> but my junior year is when I finally took off in college and had an incredible season. It was my first All American year, and I attribute that to me playing inside because it, it it got me stronger. It allowed me to play with better leverage. So I took what I learned from inside, and it helped me excel on the edge. So that's one example. Wow. And yeah, so that's one example football wise. So now fast forward into life after ball, um, and it's kind of like it's kind of like you with the uh, just you saying it took you five years to make your first episode. So I always wanted to have a podcast too, and I thought about doing it uh, like around 2019, around that time, but you know just never put everything I had into it. So for me, it took me like four years to get it off the ground, but. Literally just reaching out to people and being like, hey, do you want to sit down with me? And I got turned down a couple times and people even flaked on me. But finally, whenever I got the first guy in studio, I recorded the episode, put it out. And I was nervous as hell the first time I put it out. I'm sure you can, can share those same sentiments. Was nervous yeah. as hell, hated the way it looked, hated the way I sounded. But I got good feedback. Like people really enjoyed what we had to talk about in the message. And just hearing that feedback helped me overcome the nervousness and the the anxiety I had putting out that episode and helped me really grow and really helped me build. So, Oh, man. Yeah, no, for sure. I resonate with that, too. And it's funny because now that I've got this podcast and I have enough of a library to, like, support that there's proof of concept in what I'm doing, I have no issue hitting somebody up and saying, hey, you want to come on this thing? And it, it's one thing, too, because a lot of the people I talk to are business owners, executives, or at least the people that I'm trying to reach out to. I've got a good uh, athlete base, and you're helping me with my statistics there, so I appreciate that. <laughs> but it's like you ask a CEO, hey, man, can I buy you lunch? Can you know? I just want to pick your brain. I want to hear about your journey. You're not getting a message back if you're – some small random business owner who lives in Murphy, Texas, right? Mm -hmm. But if you say, hey, I'm building out this podcast platform and I've got all these episodes and this is who I'm reaching, mm -hmm. dude, the the success rate of getting a response is like night and day, bro. And it's just mm -hmm. putting it out there and starting that has allowed me to to get those reps to use kind of what you said. So no, yeah, that's dope, you, you hit it right on the head. And I always love to compare things to sports. So it's just yeah. like, you know, yeah. as a pass rusher, it's like, you know, putting a new move on film, like whether it's the spin move or the Ooh. chop and rip, like whatever it is, you might not be good at it, but you just got to get it on film that first time so that you can grow okay. from there so that you can critique yourself. But if you're too scared to put it on film, and that's why it takes somebody like me four years to start a podcast. That's why, you know, the growth is a lot slower than it should be when if you just put yourself out there, if you just start moving forward, just start, just take Man. a step, like you said, then that's how, you know, you get your trajectory to really take off. Yeah, it's that 1% every day, but you have to be intentional mm -hmm. about getting that 1% to allow it to compound. Dude, I didn't know about the you moving inside, but that's a crazy concept. Like you were probably able mm -hmm. to use the, that experience for the rest of your career. And dude, yeah. nine years in the NFL is no joke, bro. That's you. I knew you were around for a while, but man, that number is like crazy. I appreciate Crazy. that. I wanted, I wanted a nice, even, you know, round number of 10 years, but it just well, wasn't get that in the 10, cards. Man. It wasn't in the <laughs> cards. It, it wasn't in the cards. All right. So tell me about the journey in the NFL. I know you moved around um, a few teams. You got some success, but I know you probably experienced some low points as well. As you moved around from team to team, kind of walk me through some of the highs and some of the lows of – being an NFL player and the reality of the business behind the game, because somebody like me, I've got, I've got some decent insight, you know, I've got family and, and friends that have, that have been in the league, but to somebody that's completely outside, I mean, there's, I mean, it's probably night and day difference from what people think and from what the reality is. Yeah. So 
I guess so. Just a little background on my career. I played for three teams. Uh, I was okay. drafted in 2013. I went fourth round to the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah. So played for the Cardinals for four seasons. Then in 2017, signed with the New Orleans Saints and played with the Saints for two seasons. And then in 2019, signed with the Kansas City Chiefs and played there for three seasons and won a Super Bowl in 2020. So those are that's kind of like my journey throughout the league. Um, but for me, my, I guess not really my story, but something that I really struggled with in the league was injuries. I always had like injury. I had an injury bug, like, believe it or not, I've had three season ending injuries. I've torn my bicep, I've torn my pec and I've torn my Achilles. And it's felt like those injuries have came at a time where, you know, I was expected to kind of like take Mm. off throughout my career. So I remember my second year in Arizona, I got eight sacks. So the following year, I was expected to be that dude. I was expected to, you know, be the, the, the main edge rusher on that team. And the following season, I ended up tearing my bicep. So that set me back. And then, so I get another chance in New Orleans in 2017, having one of the best seasons that I've ever had, had, uh, I forgot what the numbers were, but I was having an incredible year week 10 of the season popped my Achilles. So that set Mm -hmm. me back. Then 2019 signed with the chiefs having another incredible year. I think I had five sacks in 10 games. So if we accelerate those numbers, it would have put me at eight or nine for 16, 17 games, but ended up tearing my pec like week 15, something like that. So every time I was like on the verge of breaking through, there was always an injury that set me back. And it messed with me mentally a lot. Like, I I couldn't trust my body. I felt like, you know, every time I was having success in the back of my mind, I was like, okay, things are going too well. Like, something is about to happen. Like, something is about to pop. Something is about to happen. And it was difficult. It was a difficult journey. But, you know, just putting my faith in the Lord, knowing that he's going to take me where he needs to take me, helped a lot. And also, too, just... um, just believing in myself and just not getting down on myself was probably one of the biggest things too for me. And it got me a nine year career, which is amazing. And now that I look back on it, I'm so blessed for that, but it wasn't all gravy. Like there was a lot of ups and downs with that. So. Yeah. Was there anything that you learned through those hard times and those, I mean, it's hard to call them failures. I mean, they probably feel like failures to you, but was there anything that you were able to take back that, you know, moving forward, you can hold on to that you feel like in the, on the back end, hindsight being 2020 has helped you level up as a person? Yeah. And if, I'm glad that you said that. Like, so, and the interesting that you said, interesting thing you said was it, it wasn't a failure, but it might've felt like a failure to you. And that's really what I was struggling with because I always felt like I had the talent to be like a Pro Bowl type player. But yeah. physically, my body just couldn't hold up for a full 16-game season. And I really struggled with that. You know, I felt like, you know, I underachieved. I felt like I didn't live up to my potential. But now looking back on it, it just wasn't in the cards. It just wasn't my journey. And now that I'm looking back on the other side, it's like going through those hard times got me mentally sharper. Like being able like. Whenever I was out for the season, like I said, I had three season-ending injuries. So while I was at home, while the team was continuing to play, I was able to pick up books and really sharpen my mind. I was able to create good habits while I was at home and and good habits that just carried with me throughout life. And now looking back on it, I'm not the the athlete that had all the success and didn't do nothing else in life. I'm the athlete that had quite a bit success, but I was able to sharpen up other faucets in my life, and I'm thankful for that. Yeah. Oh man, what a you're killing the game right now, bro. You you got your own podcast, don't you? <laughs> you're good at answering something, these questions, my guy. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> man, no, it's cool, man. And it, you know, I said it before. We talked on it already, but it's true. Our pain leads us to our purpose, and I'm trying to get better at articulating this. But I'm a firm believer that our passion and our purpose are are two different things. Our passion comes from within us. Our purpose is what we're placed here for and what can come out of us. 
Man, and that's hard right there. The I, like, pain I like that. Yeah. Gets us to our purpose. It's the stuff that we have to live through and go grow, not just go through, but grow through that gets us to be able to become the person that whoever God needs us to be can actually fulfill that role. And man, I, I just I see you, bro, and I see you sitting in the seat that you need to be in. And even if you don't fully like feel it yet, like from the outside, like I see the steps and it's, it's powerful. And I just see so many great things come in. And, uh, I talk to my wife about this all the time, man, that the tricky game of, of comparison. And it's like, you know, you compare yourself to, and there's a book I'll throw at you, uh, the gap in the game written by Dan Sullivan and Benjamin Hardy. And he talks about living in the gap is looking at, where I expect to be at, where I want to be at versus where I currently am or what I've achieved. That's living in the gap. Mm -hmm. On the contrary, living in the gain is looking at where I came from and what I'm able to achieve based on how far I've come now. Mm -hmm. And so the entire book is about becoming the type of person that can live in the gain just from a mental, Mm -hmm. spiritual outpouring perspective you know, you're able to fully understand where it's more about where you've come from and what you're doing versus, oh man, I just can't. Cause you know, somebody like me, I'm living in the, if I'm living in the gap, I'm looking at you and you done did it right. Like, Mm -hmm. and I'll never have nine years of NFL experience. So why even bother? But Mm -hmm. I already know, man, I got such an amazing platform. And if I can link up with guys like you and, and speak into you and add value to whoever through this conversation, like, I'm doing exactly what I'm here for. And it just for you, bro, like I see you doing it too, man. It's really special. Like, it's really no, cool. I, I appreciate that, man. And you, like, you you dropping nuggets right now. You hitting it on the head. And that's what it is. Comparison, um, I forgot what the quote, like, comparison is the thief of joy. And I try to mm. live through that because when when you're in a team environment, whether that's sports, whether that's, you know, a technology startup, whether, you know, whether it's just the faculty team, whatever it is, you're going to be looking at your teammates. You're going to just naturally be comparing yourself to them and how they're doing. So me, I'm looking at guys like Cam Jordan, Chris Jones, and I'm like, you know what? I got that type of talent, but I'm struggling yeah. with injuries and they're not. Like, this is unfair for me. I'm not as good as they are. Like, I could look at it like that. And I have looked at it like that in the past, but that's the wrong train of thought. That's the wrong mindset. Like the right mindset is, look, I'm blessed to still be playing this game. I've got nine years. I may not, you know, be a future Hall of Famer like some of the guys that I played with, but you know what? I could come back to my hood of Pflugerville and be just as impactful mm. doing it my way. Wow. And that's, you know, that's what I try to focus on. And that's where I try to keep my, my train of thought on. And I'm just glad yeah. you kind of shed light to that a little bit. No, nah, man, that's that's good stuff, bro. Like, you know. We always try to add value to one another. And, you know, if if you see that opportunity, I feel like we get blessed when we bless, you know, other people. And if there's an opportunity to share that blessing, you know, do it, bro. And I see you doing it every day with what you're what you're building. And that's why I really wanted to have you on. Let me finish with this, because we talked about like you as a mentor. We kind of talked about resources. But so for me. In my new role now, as I've been I've been on this journey as an entrepreneur within the franchising space for dang almost ten for nine years. I'm going on year nine right now. And my thing is trying to connect with people who want to be entrepreneurs, but they don't really know where to start. Franchising is a great opportunity for for these people. And I started the podcast to speak into the person that wants to get off a of zero but they don't, they don't quite know, know how or know which direction to go. So for me, I want to give those nuggets to let somebody know that it doesn't matter what your resources are around you, where you're at, you have currently what you need to at least take that first step. So as mm-hmm. I'm curious from an NFL player, like what resources are given to you guys, if any, to mm-hmm. move into that next phase of life? Or is that something that you kind of had to curate and figure out on your own? Well, I think um, I think there's two things. So 
one thing we have the NFLPA, which is just our union. And as soon as you retire, there's, you know, a ton of benefits out there for you. There's a ton of resources such as symposiums, career fairs, stuff like that, that you can hop on and, you know, just soak up some knowledge and figure out what your next journey is. Um, but to me, the most important resource is looking at like your career and, you know, whether your career was two seasons, whether your career was nine seasons like me, but looking at your career, looking at who'd you play, looking at who you played for and taking that experience and kind of spinning it into the opportunity that you want. So if you're trying to, you know, if you're trying to, I don't know, jump on, if you're, you're applying for a job, right? And I don't know the specific position, but within you, it's your job to take your resume and use your experiences from the league and spin it in the way that you want on your resume. So somebody like me, I'd be like, played nine seasons in the NFL, was a leader amongst my position group, um, faces adversity well, um, performs well under pressure, um, rises to the occasion when the lights are the brightest. So you just take stuff like that and you just spin it to the job profile that you want and seeing how an NFL player is, you know, a one percenter. Like there's not that many of us in the league. Not many people are going to have that on their resume. Sure. So for retired yeah. players, you got to take what separates you and you got to spin it in your favor. Nice. Do you feel like a lot of uh, players, I mean, they, they get that education. Like, was that something that you just had? Cause you, you know, your mental is on that game already. Or is there like, is that a part of the PA? Is guys are getting coached up in order to be able to pivot and do that sort of a thing? Yeah, it's a little bit of both. Um, I have strong right. mentors. I have really strong yeah. mentors that have, that have poured into me. So I'll give it to those guys. But also, too, it's, it's taking your resources and really, like, using your resources. Like, there's so many guys that retire and don't ever look into what the PA is offering, and they're missing out on not only money but opportunities to sharpen their skill set. Mm. So you have to you have to invest in yourself. You have to pour into yourself. And having mentors and listening to what your mentors are telling you while also taking the resources that are there for you and using all those up at the same time, that's investing in yourself. And that's that's what I took pride in doing. Nice. Okay. No, that's what's up. How would you coach up somebody – who is maybe they're a dreamer, maybe they, they got big goals, big ambitions, but they're afraid or they're unsure about putting themselves out there. What, what's one final thing that you can lay down for somebody like that? I would just say a closed mouth, don't get fed. And that's, that's what <laughs> that's it comes good. down to. Like, you can't, you can't be timid. Like, if there's something that you want, you can't be timid about it. You have to put yourself out there. And that's, it's hard to do. Like, I've played in front of a hundred thousand people, but shooting the first shooting my first episode of a podcast was frightening for me. Yeah. So, but it was something I had to do. It was something and you have to be uncomfortable. You gotta be comfortable being uncomfortable and stepping outside of what you're used to. If you don't do that, then you can't see you, you don't know what your boundaries are. You don't know how far you can reach unless you're really pushing yourself. So to answer your question, like if somebody's scared to to jump into what they want to do then you're not really dreaming hard enough then. Like, you don't want it bad enough. You have yeah. to put yourself out there. A closed mouth does not get fed. Man, amen. That's a soundbite right there. When I clip this up, <laughs> that's going on the front, man. <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, that's what's up, bro. Well, let's close this thing out, man. I could talk to you for at least another two hours, but I got a, I got a kindergartner to pick up, man. I get it. Mm -hmm. But I appreciate you for hopping on. I'm going to have your link to the show, to the YouTube channel, behind the face mask. Make sure you guys listen to my man Alex on his show. Follow this guy. There's so many beautiful things that are coming out of what he's doing. Shout out Pflugerville. As always, stay humble, stay hungry, stay streetwise. Peace. Yes, sir. All right, everybody. That's a wrap. Thank you so much for making it to the end. Hey, if this episode added any value to your life at all, please like it, share it, give me a five-star review. It's the only way that this show is going to gain traction and help more people achieve their dreams. If you're ready to start your franchise journey, visit streetwisefranchising.com. Let's set up a time to talk. Hit me up on LinkedIn. 
Until next time, stay humble, stay hungry, stay streetwise. Peace.